So the first panel discussion this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite up to the stage our moderator, Dr. Mejdal al Khartani. Now, he is Assistant Professor of King at Saudi University. So a round of applause, please, everybody. And this panel discussion is about AI-enabled learning for personalized and engaging students' learning experience. So this is going to be very interesting. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we will have a discussion on a very interesting topic which is related to the AI-enabled learning for personalized and engaging student learning experience. So our panel today will uh, provide the opportunity to find out how the AI transform the learning experience to support personalized, adaptive, dynamic, Le dynamic learning experience and how the industry leaders are implementing this technology and we are going to highlight some of the pros and cons and what are the benefits of applying such a technology and also we are going to address some of the risk and cons of uh, this technology and by the end of this discussion we will highlight some of the recommendation and solution so let's first Welcome our panelists for today's discussion. So we'll start with uh, Mrs. Mona Minjal. And also we will have uh, Mr. Khebrit Jansen. And also we will have Mr. Arindam Banerjee. And also we will have uh, Mrs. Sri Janir. Please come to the stage to start our panel discussion. Thank you. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank my panelists uh, for attending our day, to, uh, our day uh, today discussion and to discuss such, such a important and interesting topic. So uh, basically, uh, we will start with just a little bit introduction about the topic and then we will start to ask the panelists uh, question uh, our point by point. So uh, basically what does it mean AI, artificial intelligence? So, so artificial intelligence it's constitute uh, from two words, artificial and intelligence. So artificial it means it's made by a human and intelligence this is one of the human being uh, ability so to think and to make a decision based on the previous experience so this is the way we are doing every day so we have long experience and from that experience it's already it's it's it's, it's considered data and it's being processed in our brain so we are trying to collect such a data and try to process it and then make a decision upon it. So uh, this is intelligence. So artificial intelligence uh, basically is the technology that try to mimic how the human think and act to perform a specific task. So uh, this is basically the artificial intelligence. So we are going to focus on the artificial intelligence in the domain of education and learning. So this is very important. So there are different application. We can, you can, uh, now it's, it's running in a different place. So this is including the video recommendation, also the automated grader, and also the automated uh, attendance. You know, they use the attendance for face, using face recognition and others. Also we have other application related to chatbot, voice assistant, and uh, and also the one and most importantly they use the ai application in improve in improving and enhancing and promoting the learning experience so this is why we start to hear about personalized hybrid dynamic adaptive learning using the combination between 
uh, teacher and uh, AI technology in the classroom. So this is basically, this is a basic introduction of our topic today. So first of all, uh, I would like, especially before you start answering the first question, just a little bit about yourself. So uh, why not we start a little bit before we ask the question. So, uh, so Mr. Uh, Mrs. Muna, so can you just let, uh, let us about yourself a little bit? Sure. So good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, I am uh, Mona Munjal, and uh, I'm a senior leadership member with uh, a school pathways, uh, NOIDA, which is an IB continent school. We are a K-12 school uh, in the region uh, NOIDA, which is uh, the Delhi Ensa region in uh, India. Uh, so uh, what I've done is, in fact, before I was at school, I have been with the corporates and I've been engaged, I've engaged with learners of different and uh, very diverse uh, age groups, uh, starting from infants to learners who are mid-career professionals. And I've interacted with their families, I've interacted with the learners themselves, the teachers, the trainers. So um, I think that's, it's been a very enriching experience to understand uh, where they are in terms of their uh, acceptance of uh, an understanding of AI. Uh, that's one. And, um, uh, and yes, I think I'll come back to the question a little later in terms of what it really means uh, and how we can, how it is benefiting in the uses of AI. Uh, you know, when we, when we talk about differentiation, we talk about individualized learning and customized learning. So I think I'll come back to that oh, later, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Muna. So Mr. Jaybrit. So okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, my name is Gabriel Janssen and I am coming from the Netherlands. Uh, where I am working in the event industry, so I am my core business is organizing business events, and with that I also wrote a book about uh, event management, and that book is internationally used, and uh, also a topic in it is about the future in events, and maybe you know in events we use a lot of technic uh, and also the the future techniques. And uh, it's, it's an honor to be in this panel to talk about it. And uh, I also work with several projects and I'm also a lecturer at the university for one day in a week. And uh, that's next to my core business. It's a very nice hobby to do. And uh, we are using also in the lectures a lot of uh, uh, this, yeah, this kind of topics. Uh, we use v VR in the lectures, and uh, I'm, I'm very eager to learn and to talk about this topic. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. So, Mr. Uh, uh, Anindam, can you just a little bit about your... Yeah. Uh, shukran, Dr. Majdal. Uh, thank you, everyone, and a very good morning to one and all here. Uh, I'm Dr. Arindam, and uh, I'm an associate professor and assistant dean of uh, Business School, Kales PJN School of Global Management. I've been associated with the education industry for over one and a half a decade. And uh, I engage my students in class in a subject called quantitative finance. And ironically, my PhD is in education leadership. So my PhD thesis was on bringing happiness in the classroom and how to make a happy child. So uh, very few in the world has a PhD in this area. So thanks to everybody in Dubai who supported me because UAE is a place which has a ministry of happiness. UAE has a place which has a street called Happiness Street. So we speak and we consider happiness as a core element of a child's well-being and development here. And uh, I'm sure that I'm going to learn a lot from my uh, fellow speakers here in, in this very esteemed uh, panel discussion and also throughout the day from others. Once again, yes. shukran, Dr. Majdik. Thank you. Mr. Arindam, so uh, also we have uh, today Srija. So can you tell us about your uh, experience, please? Yes, <clears throat> thank you, doctor. Good morning, everybody. Happy to be here, like all of you. Uh, I'm associated with GEMS, very proud to be associated with GEMS Education, one of the largest providers of K-12 education in the Middle East. And I've been associated with the education industry for the last two decades. I'm assistant principal in one of the schools, and we are probably the end users of these artificial intelligence apps. So I'll be speaking about what we feel as a community which are using it, and I'll be giving a certain perspective of my students and my teachers who are currently using it. So in our school, we use more than 100 
also apps uh, in different platforms. And um, like all of us do these days, we use it for uh, filling in the gaps uh, by integrating, by upskilling, reskilling where required. Uh, these uh, apps are very adept in uh, understanding the talent of a student and matching the content with the talent, the pace, the learning skills of the child. Uh, we also use them for managing all the data, which is, which is something that the teachers find very, very useful. So we have been experimenting with various of these apps and these, the implementation process is halfway through, some done, and we are directly accountable for the financial obligations that we have as well when we invest in an artificial intelligence app, how useful it is for a problem that we are trying to solve. An implementation process, like all of you know, goes through whether looking into the readiness of all the stakeholders, whether my teachers are ready for it, whether students would enjoy it, parents would like to know about it, and then we monitor, we review, and we see whether we need to continue with the app. So the current um, usage of it so far, uh, which I must say is very safely being done, is very positive, and we've had a lot of positive reviews, both from students and teachers about this. We'll discuss the cons later, probably. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. And uh, Sirija, so uh, uh, let's start with uh, Mrs. Mona. So what do you think, uh, what do you mean about personalized learning and how can AI be used to achieve uh, personalized uh, learning? Yes. So I see a lot of value in the uh, potential that AI has. Uh, because uh, first of all, I think it's an amazing tool that can offer differentiation in the classroom. And how does it do that? Uh, I think if we look at the application of AI in a classroom, uh, it can be divided broadly into three different areas. One is planning, second is classroom delivery, and the third one is assessments. So when we're talking about three areas of application which are related to the uh, student learning, uh, in a classroom itself, if I have to give an example, uh, you know, a teacher would understand that in a typical classroom of, say, around 20, 20 children, you might have 10 students who are high achievers. There could be five who are achievers, and there could be another five who are, uh, you know, on, who, who we can say are need more development or are slow learners. Now, uh, and we, we all know that, uh, you know, different learners are motivated with learning in different styles. Uh, so, is it possible for a teacher to offer that differentiation in a classroom where each student can learn differently? Because if everybody has to learn the same thing at the same time, at the same pace, there is a possibility that you will have some learners uh, who may uh, fail, and they may not feel very motivated to make an attempt again. Now, the amazing thing about um, AI is that, first, if a teacher starts with the whole process of observation in the classroom itself, for example, uh, you know, she, she's able to assess the needs of, uh, of the student, different students in the class, different groups that we're talking about. Uh, she can then curate the content and set the assignments accordingly. Uh, for example, uh, for high achievers, she might want to put some questions which are more challenging versus the ones, uh, you know, who are the other uh, learners. So, uh, so the one is, like I said, it's about the planning. So it starts with the students, uh, the teacher's observations about the students and then the content can be curated accordingly. And uh, also it allows the, like I said, uh, you know, different students will have different learning styles. AI is able to uh, give a lot of that, uh, that, that free hand to teachers because teachers will go out and look for resources for uh, you know, managing their lesson plans. Some of them um, go online, some of them have their own resources. So how do you plan an effective lesson plan? Uh, I think AI has a big role to play in that. Uh, number two is also, like I said, is about classroom delivery. So once the teacher has identified the learning needs of a student, because that's the first step, uh, second thing could be that she looks at how she wants to deliver in the classroom. She might want to, uh, you know, do it differently for students who are high achievers. Uh, she might want to just give them a stimuli for a particular concept and then say, okay, this is how the content will come to you. And, and, the, and, and the beauty about AI is that it just uh, offers the right content at the right time uh, for, the, for the learner. Uh, you know, basis the learning needs of a student. Uh, the third is about the assessments. So, you know, it allows an adaptive 
assessment environment. So which means all the students may not be assessed in the same way. So there is differentiation again possible there, which means every student can actually feel like a, a, a real a performer. Uh, and that is again a motivation for the student to learn. Um, also, I think it frees up the teacher to a big extent, you know, when it comes to assessments, because it is giving far more detailed, um, uh, you know, assessment of uh, what, uh, where the learner is stuck about the learning styles, because it is absorbing data, it is analyzing learners' data, and then it is processing that data, then giving feedback and recommendations. So as far as assessments are concerned, I think it beautifully uh, uh, gives a very detailed report of uh, you know, what needs to, uh, how, how the learner, learners, learning needs need to be managed. And I think uh, that kind of makes, makes it possible for, uh, you know, for a classroom to be a, a really, to have a very effective learning session because there is personalization for every student and the content, as I said, uh, can be very engaging. So for example, in our own school at Pathway School, uh, no idea that I'm talking about, we are using almost 216 digital platforms. So uh, whether it is uh, my primary school student, whether it's a middle school, in middle school it's for different subjects, for example, they're using Manga Hyper Math, um, uh, they're using ManagePack for, uh, you know, uh, for, for kind of, uh, uh, ManagePack is used and there are designing softwares they're using. So uh, there is library management system, so there are diff diff different digital platforms and I think they all assist in ensuring that the learning is effective. Yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, was a great answer. So uh, you said uh, like uh, it will be, or oh, the AI can uh, has a big benefits at different stages of the learning process, starting from the uh, planning and then uh, delivery and then assessment. Okay, Mr. Uh, Hebert, can you tell us why we need the AI technology system platform to promote the learning experience? Yeah, maybe <clears throat> I think it's it's important to know uh, the, how AR works and how you can use it because I I feel a lot of uh, colleagues of me are afraid of it, and uh, I think every new development uh, has some uh, some challenges, but uh, we are also talking about engaging students. And I think we have to know that the, the concentration bow of all students, uh, I think Microsoft did a, did a research in 2000, and there was a, in that time a concentration bow from about 10, 10 seconds or 12 seconds, and uh, about 10 years later it was eight seconds. So it, it was 30% lower, and if that goes on, I'm afraid that the concentration bow will be much lower than the eight seconds uh, that the students can, can focus on one thing. And the question is also a little bit, how can we use the new technology, and AI is one of that, uh, to, to engage the students so that they can concentrate and that they can learn, really learn something. Uh, so that's a challenge, I think. And another challenge is also, um, to, yeah, when do you use AI for? Because I, I think not every topic, not every form of lecture can use it. Uh, for example, if you want to learn a language, how can you use AI? And, and if you want to learn something about medical things, I think you can use it much better. Uh, so that's also, you have to choose when you can use which technology to, to engage the students more. And I think it's also a challenge, uh, for example, if the students have to make uh, a report in the AI, you can ask the computer to, to write a report for you so that the student don't have to write it by himself, but, and you, you, you will get a perfect report. So that's also a point of thinking, how, how can you make a difference and how can you see as a teacher or as a lecturer that it's made by the student or it's made by the computer. So there are some, some challenges, but I think it's, uh, we, have to, we have to be open for it and the new technologies and we have to find out the way how we can use it the best way. I think that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Arindam, 
uh, what do you think, like uh, from your uh, previous uh, like experience, and you did fantastic job in doing or writing about that, how to bring happiness in the classroom. So I just want to know about your point of view. How can the AI be will be able to be used to bring happiness in the classroom? Uh, of course. Uh, before that, if somebody from the organizing team can help me out in showcasing a particular video which I wanted to show, the actual application of how we do at our workplace in engaging student, capturing the data set, and making the learning very personalized. So if somebody in the meantime can help me out, I'll be more than happy. I don't know how they would help me. But let me tell you, the happiness is something which is very much, I, I think I'm happy. I mean, uh, happiness is something, uh, and I'm married for 17 years or so. Okay. So I'm very happy. So, and my wife is here. So, you know, these are interlinked statements. So uh, primarily, uh, AI is not something new. AI in education is also not something new, but today we are using the platforms, which are the digitized platform. Personalized learning has been a very long time in ancient India, ancient Chinese system, where the Gurukul system used to happen, where every teacher used to know what the students uh, expectations are and whether those expectations are being delivered in the right moment. But today, we are able to harness the power of capturing the huge volume of data points. So statistically, we are much better off today because we are able to create the algorithm. So I just wanted to showcase something of that sort, what we have created at our university. Uh, if somebody, so how do I? Okay, okay so. Okay, just bear with me for a minute. It will be interesting. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Of So now let me, let me continue. Now, let's look at the value chain of AI application in engaged learning. We are primarily speaking, still now we have spoken about engagement inside the classroom. The engagement comes much before that. So the value chain starts from where the student is coming from, whether it's in primary education, tertiary education, or higher education. What is the expectation level and the admirations of the student and what the students, whether the students' expectations are being delivered post the study or the post the program. We all know we are all educationists here. Learning is not equal to teaching. The core essence of AI is primarily to understand how much the, the, the gap can be bridged between learning and teaching. Because today, what we have in the classroom, we primarily have something which is very broad-based. And when we say broad-based, a teacher comes, teaches, not everybody is in the same level of understanding, and as a result of which, some students perform better, some do not perform better, and the, most of them are average. What AI, to me, I understand, as everyone has spoken, AI basically helps us to understand through various kinds of assessment, engagement, continuous monitoring, of how the student can adapt to the various levels and strata of the teaching method. Now, let me cite an example. There are two ways by which AI can be implemented. One, by the traditional core platforms of trying to understand whether the student's learning is engaged through various assessments. And the other is through monitoring the sensory behavior. I'll give you an example. We have created something called the eyeball tracker. Now, what is an eyeball tracker? An eyeball tracker is basically using engaged, 
engaged cameras or sensory cameras to primarily capture the moods and the sentiments of a student throughout a particular lecture. So you are able to understand whether the student is really focusing on the studies or whether the student mind is somewhere else and whether the student is engaged inside the classroom. Now once we capture the data, that data gets disseminated, analyzed and a feedback loop is being created where the student basically is being told, was there some kind of a problem for you to be engaged in the classroom? So primarily, this is one element. Other element, if we can play that, it's called an engaged learning classroom. So I'll play that video for you, if they allow me. We have created something called engaged learning classroom, ELC. The whole idea is engaging. So let me let, me, let them play that video and yeah. If you can have the sound, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. John Lodowitz. I am the Vice President Academic of the SB Jane School of Global Management. I want to share with you about the classroom of the future. The classroom of the future that we have today at SB Jane. We call it the Engaged Learning Classroom, or ELC. So let's continue where we left off in our last class. In our last class, we talked about data privacy, we talked about ethics in business. And I'd ask you to read an article about the Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal, which just erupted this year in March. So let's go in. The World Economic Forum and its future of the jobs framework identified complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity as the top three skills of 2020. But here's where the problem lies. Traditional classrooms don't really do a good job when it comes to developing these skills. What we have done at SPJ is something quite innovative and different. We've created this learning ecosystem called the Engaged Learning Classroom that focuses on helping students develop the skills they were actually used to work. Skills like problem solving, communication, teamwork, critical thinking, creativity, and children's intelligence. So unlike a traditional classroom where you take notes and you watch a PowerPoint, in the ELC, you will discuss, you will debate, you will argue, and you will ideate. And faculty will engage you by asking questions. Questions like, what would you do if you were the CEO of a business that is not doing well? Or how would you expand your business across a new market? So as we've seen, Facebook has been in the news recently for quite a number of scandals, most importantly for breaching data privacy, and election interfering. I would like you to imagine that you are the CEO of Facebook, you are Mark Zuckerberg, put yourself in his shoes. How are you going to assure your investors, your customers, and your shareholders that you have their best interest in mind? Please come up with one integrated solution to address three areas, government regulation, your own customer base, as well as the branding of Facebook. You've got two minutes. Let's 
Sarah asked, what have you voted for as to why did you make that choice? I voted to have data regulated, and to be honest, I don't think Facebook is solely responsible for the data. It's nothing like what you would expect to do in an undergraduate program. You will be cold called, you will be challenged to really think and make smart decisions. You will participate in polls and quizzes. One thing is for sure, you won't find yourself in the middle of a boring election. That's an interesting point. I think uh, Keegan wants to ask a question. Yeah. Sarah has a very interesting viewpoint, and I'm all for the regulation changes. But as a CEO, I would take accountability, outline fixtures, and focus on reassuring my customers that we are very serious about protecting the data. I really like the fact that there is a spirit of healthy competition in the class. We are constantly challenging each other to step out of our comfort zone and think out of the box. We are active, invested, and really on our toes. I think both your points are excellent. Now what I would like to do is I would like all of us to get together in groups and to figure out whether Facebook should be split up because currently it is occupying a monopoly. If we're splitting up Facebook, then the questions are drafted in such a way that you have to step out of the shoes of a student and into the shoes of a business owner. And using whatever information you have and drawing upon the concepts that you've learned from the classes, you have to frame your solution. Over a period of time, you really start to understand what makes businesses tick, why leaders make the decisions they make, and how they can creatively solve the problem. Now, if you're responsible for the next phase of Facebook's growth, what would you do first? What would be your number one priority? Please submit your responses using your tablets. An exciting feature of the Engaged Learning Classroom are the tablets that you see students using. These tablets are equipped with features that allow you to virtually interact with faculty while in classes and programs. You can virtually raise your hand to ask a question. You can ask the faculty to slow down or go faster. You can participate in a quiz or a poll. You can take notes and you can share your documents in real time. You can bookmark the lecture and watch it later from the comfort of your home, cafe or wherever you are. So how do we know that students actually develop the skills that are needed to do well at work? We have a learning analytics app. We call it Scoreboard. And what it does is it measures the student's achievement of business skills. Are you in the top 10% of the class in creative thinking? Do you need to improve your business intelligence? How are you faring in critical thinking? Scoreboard keeps track of your performance every single day lets you know how well you are doing versus the rest of the class. Hi Prab, I was just looking at my scoreboard and I don't think I'm doing very good in creativity. You seem to be doing really well in terms of critical thinking and business intelligence. In fact, um, you are in the top 10% of the class. <laughs> I also thought you did made a really good point today when you talked about business analysts. What I could do is I could send you some case studies, you could go through them and we could discuss them later this week. And I can also give you some additional practice material. I like to think of the ERC as a gymnasium, where you come in every day, exercise your brain, build your creative stamina, and train yourself to think like a business leader. And the scoreboard has a weighing scale that lets you know exactly how you're progressing. You get to know the facts, how good you are at creativity, what you need to do to improve your critical thinking skills. You really get to figure out your strengths and weaknesses all the right steps to improve your game. I think that's really amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I, I would, thank, you. thank you, team. Thank you. I, I would like to just sum up. What we have done is all of you do. We engage. That's AI. But what we are doing at the end of the day, the same critical feedback is going to the student, but the difference is here the student is equally involved along with the professor in understanding where she is doing better or she is lacking. The engagement is almost equal. It is not one to one. It is between mutually between the two. Using the data sets, data point. And I think when the student answering your question, uh, professor, how do you measure the kid is happy? So I have two kids, uh, they're pretty happy uh, when I'm not around. So primarily, 
when you empower the kid in the decision making process with your active intervention the kid understands that he or she is not been administered not been whipped not been always looked down upon but equally involved in the decision making process the kid is happy mm. and i think that's the key ai to sum up ai is a tool nothing more than that a digital platform which is harnessing the data points i think uh, madam would say a lot about the pros and the cons there are a lot of disadvantages which i am not going to speak as of now but to sum up ai is nothing more than a tool which has been in existence for ages since 1960s when it was first coined today we are making the process more data enabled okay uh, thank you it was a very interesting video so we should see some of the future of uh, classroom and also you mention or you emphasize the the ability of the ai technology to achieve equal involvement so uh, srija can you let us know i will uh, talk just a little bit about um, the powerful of ai technology in terms of uh, student uh, learning student also engagement and experience uh, at the school level, uh, like Mona mentioned, it is more of a support to the teachers. Um, at the moment, what we believe and that we strongly believe is in uh, the fact that uh, the engineering towards learning should be from inside. Uh, AI does support in learning, but what, what is the perception now of educators is that most of the inputs that is going from, from the uh, machines to the humans are very much external. The more we let them think about learning in terms of what we teach them in schools about cognition and metacognition, understanding themselves more, that would support a student in their lifelong journey of learning more than giving them these external factors where a machine is looking at a certain amount of certain amount of figures and certain amount of words and taking literally influential decisions in a child's understanding of himself or herself. So that's, that's the dangerous part of AI. However, it does support in, in, in making the content um, uh, that uh, suitable for a student, making, going to the pace. We have gone to the extent that we have made it okay for the child to be humane a day. We tell them, okay, yesterday you went out for a movie, it is okay, you've not done your homework, it's fine. Your grandmother was unwell, you went to the hospital to visit, you've not completed a project, it's fine. And we have adjusted the pace of learning using technology for each of those students. But we have not yet enabled machines to be influential in understanding them and giving them a suggestion in their next steps. That would be coming, as, as we were deciding, discussing outside. But what we strongly believe is that that humanness that is there in the classroom and interactions between a teacher and student is never going to be replaced by any of the, any of the AI machines. Okay, that was uh, also very great. So uh, basically to sum up the, uh, the, the first, uh, so we discuss about the benefits and the, bar or the powerful of the AI technology. So uh, what I, understand I also uh, absorb from your question so the AI technology will address four main analysis so the first one is the descriptive analysis so the descriptive analysis it will uh, highlight the level of engagement also uh, the level of monitoring the uh, students so from their emotion, from their how many clicks they did, and from the number of login in the platform, all of this is can contribute or align with the descriptive analysis. Also, we have the diagnostic analysis. So the diagnostic analysis, we need to know uh, the student needs. 
So what the student is really lack of. So we, this is kind of diagnostic. We need to, to, dig, to dig more, to see the root causes, why the students get this grade, why the, so all of this is about data. So we need to have a big data in order to have very good diagnostic analysis. Also we mentioned about the predictive analysis. So the predictive analysis, this is one of the main uh, powerful of the AI. So we do, we do prediction. So this is, the AI is about, we need to predict the future. So I don't want the students fail, because once it's failed, then it's too late to make him a change. So we need to predict when he's gonna fail. So, so this is the right time too, so I can be close to the students and help him to, to, to do better, to do, to do a change. So this is about the also predictive analysis. And the last level of the analysis is the descript, is the, is the uh, prescriptive analysis. So the prescriptive analysis, was, is, this is very high level. So what I, sh so it's answer, what should I do? Like, I know I predict the students will go in, the, in, that, in that way. So how can, what should I do to prevent him to the right way? So this is very important. So once we have a digital platform, the smart platform that is able to address the, all of those four analysis, this is the right way. This is the closed loop of the, uh, of the learning process. So now we will go to the other side of this one. So we are going to address some of the cons and some of the disadvantages and possible risk of using AI technology. So let's start with uh, Ms. Muna. So what do you think about the cons of using AI technology? Well, uh, I enjoy technology and I, like I said, I think I really appreciate the whole value that it's going to bring into the classrooms. However, I do have my, uh, my reservations in terms of when I look at the cons as well. Uh, it does allow, in terms of the benefits like we, we just talked about, it, it allows personalization at a scale. It allows, uh, you know, access to global universal uh, classrooms. So those are the benefits. But when we come to the cons, I think my first concern is uh, what, what, are we, what personalization are we really talking about? Are we talking about personalization of content only? Um, uh, you know, where, which is more about cognitive skills and like uh, Shrita just talked about what happens to the metacognitive uh, cognitive skills. You know, there are, uh, in the video of course, we just saw that, you know, it is also focusing on communication skills. Uh, uh, it's, it's focusing on, uh, you know, your creativity skills, but uh, what, what about the social skills? That's just so important, you know, uh, when, when a child walks into the classroom, and I think all of us have seen that in the pandemic, what happened? There was so much, there was overuse of technology, and, and the children were so happy to be back in the classrooms, because if I talk about schools, because of course I, I work with the school right now, and, and my experience, I'm going to share the experience that I have at school. Children were so happy being with each other. You know, there's so much that we talk about uh, in terms of peer learning, collaborative learning, which is in a social, uh, socially, uh, you know, uh, physically uh, uh, closer group. Uh, there is a lot of exchange that happens because ultimately, I think the purpose is something that we have to look at. What is the key objective that we are looking at? What is that one key objective that AI should focus on? I think uh, that's, that's very critical. Uh, second, uh, I do have um, uh, a thought around uh, the data privacy. It's about data governance, about data mining, who owns this data. Uh, you know, I think as of now, we don't have um, guidelines or regulations, so to say. Uh, they're there, but, uh, you know, I think we just need to look at that aspect of it. The, the, maybe the governments, the authorities need to step in and, and look at some of those policy decisions that they need to make so that uh, even the companies who are using this very sensitive data of young learners uh, you know, uh, we, we know that it is not being uh, compromised anywhere. So, so these are two key concerns that, that I think uh, we need to look at and, and uh, see and explore the solutions to these. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hebret, what do you think? Yeah, I think AI is very useful and we already use it a lot. I think if you drive a car and you want to know the way and, and the time that you arrive at, at, at the location, uh, it exactly can tell you in advance how much time it will take. Uh, but I think talking about uh, using it in the classroom, uh, I always think what will be the 
perfect uh, teacher, for example. And what 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 is the perfect teacher in the future? Is it is it a robot that uh, that exactly knows what what the students want to hear, so that we don't use a human teacher anymore? I I don't believe in that. I think that the human factor will always uh, is an important will al always be an important uh, uh, part of it. Uh, and I'm also a little bit afraid about the ethical part of it. Uh, where are the limits and, and what are the borders? How far can you, can you go to use it? For example, you told me in China they, they use the face recognition and uh, to, to look what the mood is. Um, the information, where does it go to? To the parents? Uh, but maybe if you want to have a job in, in the future and you are talking with your future boss and he's, he's reading, ah, when you were in the class at that date, I saw you were not interested in that, you know, where, where are the limits? And I think uh, we have to think about and we have to talk a lot about it and make rules uh, how to use it. I think that's an important matter. Yeah, that's very important. And also, um, uh, Dr. So, uh, Dr. Arindam, so what do you think about some of the possible risks and some of the uh, cons of using AI technology? Uh, let me begin by, because we have limited time, let me begin by saying uh, AI is not a wave, it's a tsunami. No matter how much we discuss, you cannot prevent its infiltration into every part of our life in the future. It's already there, monetarily, Billions of dollars have already been invested across the globe. So we discussing about its cons is not going to help prevent it. Now let's understand where we are heading towards and where we are in right now. Because as they say in Africa, a person who knows where he has come from will know where he will go to. So let's be very specific and pointed. AI is a tool. AI is a tool, it's a platform, it's nothing more than an algorithm which helps you to perform your task in a better manner, which humanly it takes more time. Nothing more than that. Now, we are talking about the cons. Believe me, this world would not have been happy if we did not have the negatives and the cons. We can only relish and enjoy the good things because the bad was there. We are in a realistic world, not ideal world. Cons will be there. I think, think about the technology intervention in our daily life today. Do we like our kids always on the mobile phone? No, we don't like. But could we prevent it happening? We cannot. Eventually, technology, AI infiltration will be there in our lives, but it will be up to us, us means we as educators, and above us, the policymakers to decide where the buck should stop. Eventually, we will have very differentiated thoughts. But ultimately, it is the decision makers who need to decide. To cite an example of, uh, of, of my very dear esteemed uh, fellow colleague, uh, Gebert, in China, they have invested billions of dollars in a project where they use headbands to monitor the mood and sentiments of the student. It's very much on the open platform. You can go to the YouTube and check that. They have invested billions of dollars to understand what is the status of learning of the student. So just like while in an echocardiogram, you put the sensors over your body, they have that in the headband. And one of the kids says, after my sentiments and mood analysis was sent to my parents, my parent beat me up in that video itself. Now, in any case, I come from India where my pa pa father used to beat me up every day. But think about it. That's a con if we think so. But what is the pro? We are able to monitor the student. Now the question is how frequently we should monitor him. That's the question. So AI would help us to understand everything in a better manner. But to what extent it should be used will depend on the optimal usage, and I do not think we have absolute perfect answer to it. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, Srija, can you tell us about your experience 
what are the uh, side effect of using AI technology? Uh, there are five sets of uh, people when it comes to AI. It has been classified into five. And there are people who believe it's totally negative. There are people, utopians, who believe human race has stepped into a new era and our life is going to be better. There are skeptics who believe that the investments that's gone in dollars and billions into the AI industry will take a sigmoid curve, will hit a peak, and the disadvantages are going to overrun the advantages and hit, hit back, including the AI industry itself. And there are realists who believe that it should be used, but it should be used realistically. Now here we are discussing about young adults, very young children, uh, like Mona said, our worry is how much of their data, how much of their moods, their personal information like nervousness, anxiety, lack of confidence should be captured because these emotions I may be ready to take as a teacher. Is the student yet ready to share that? If the student is an adult tomorrow, was he yesterday ready to share that emotion today? And how is it how sure are we that this is not going to be used against me at one point of time in my life? So data, yes, it is definitely very useful if applied the way it is supposed to be applied. But data breach, not one day goes when we're not hearing about a data breach story. And similarly, since artificial intelligence is coming to a level where it is where people or creators want it. So there was research in one of the universities where they they were artificial intelligence system trained students for getting into university and similarly at the same time, some humans trained students to get into university. Like expected, the students who were trained by artificial systems fared better than the human trained people. Now, the creators of artificial intelligence system believe that these artifacts should be treated like teachers and should be given rights and claims over what they achieved. Now this is literally bringing them at par with humans. I think they should only be given a supportive role and they should never be left autonomous to take decisions on behalf of humans. Okay, so uh, yes, that was, uh, thank you for your answer. So basically here, uh, to sum up, there is a need to use the AI technology. So we feel like there is some sign this is what we, the whole world is trending to the use of AI technology. One of them we discussed before is the engagement rate, okay, the, or the concentration rate. So it's a dropping over time. So now the students they cannot concentrate like, or as compared with the 10 years ago. So, uh, so we need to handle this issue with the utilizing and leveraging those AI technology. Also, the dropping out in the uh, the dropping out rate is increasing over time. So the students, if they don't engage with the class, they just drop out. So how can we handle? What, how can we make the students make me make him happy and make him more engaged with the class? So all of this concern is can be addressed or can be solved with the use of AI uh, technology. So we have a huge amount of data. This is data asset. So how can you utilize such a, uh, such a data? So the data now is called the, it's the new oil. So how can we leverage this data to bring a new product, services, platform that is able to, to enhance our educational process? So uh, this is uh, all about the, find the optimal engagement between human and machine. Okay, so we need to find the right balance. This is what we call this a human-centric learning process. The human is in the center. And the AI technology should support the teacher to deliver his course in a way that it's be more interesting. So I think now where uh, the time is out, thank you for uh, your answering the question and attending uh, in this uh, very interesting panel discussion. Thank you for all of you for a good listening and uh, yes and uh, if you have if we have time maybe we can ask we are running so thank you uh, all of you thank you thank you thank you very much to our first panel what a great way to kickstart day two 
Can we have another round of applause, everybody, please, for our fantastic panelists? As you know, we are on a strict timeline here. I do, I do hate to stop when, it's, when we're in the discussion, but uh, if you do have any questions, of course, the panelists are going to be here throughout the day if you want to ask them anything at all.